This meeting is being recorded. You would like to come in close. I've told there's a university lunch filming. I've told them that you are you take precedent. Okay. Okay. Are we on? My suspicion is very wasn't it? Spirits of the living, kindred welcome. Welcome to the 200 and lots consecutive monthly vigil. We have been standing here at the gates for almost 19 years. Well, we've been coming to the gates for over 25 years, over a quarter of a century. <laughs> We have been standing at these gates, but for the last almost 19 years, every single month. Um, here, live at the gates, even during lockdown, and while lockdown was going on, Jackie B created the Zoom vigil, which is coming to the people on Zoom via Natalie's phone and Mark, who is also a member of the MC, his technical abilities at that end. And the Zoom vigil gives an offer to people from all over the world to come and stand here at the gates with us. 
Now, it's ever so lovely to see such a crowd of people, but if you'd like to just step in a little tiny bit so I'm not shouting at the top of my voice, only however close you feel safe, because we know there's lots of things that are still flying around. Um, I'm probably aware, more aware of that than you are, but you know, anyway. So welcome to the Crossbones Vigil for the Outcast, both dead and alive. The dead, the outcast dead, are on the other side of the portal. These are the gates, the ribbon gates. But especially on, cross, on, on vigil night, we become aware that these gates are also a portal, an edge space, a liminal space where two different worlds meet. In this case, the world of the dead and the world of the living. For any world, when the goose comes to us, she comes from her world of eternity into our world of time. There's a place that meets, and this is enacting a place that meets, a place of connection, and is also symbolic of all the other places edge places where two different worlds can meet. The edge place between the in-breath and the out-breath is also a portal. There are lots of portals in the world where one world meets with another. We come here, there are 15,000 outcast dead on the other side of these gates, the mortal remains of at least 15,000 people who were buried without dignity, without honour, really no more than thrown away for the last 200 years of the graveyard's life. And then if we go back into history, this place holds the story, if not the very bones, of the Winchester geese, the women of the medieval liberty of the clink, which Crossbones sits right in the middle of, who were licensed by the church to ply their prostitute trade, but when they died, they were denied a Christian burial. John Stowe recalls this act where they were thrown away into unconsecrated graveyards way back in the 1500s. So from the Winchester geese in unconsecrated ground, so the last 200 years of this graveyard's life where there is no record, even though the church buried these 15,000 people, there is no record of it ever being consecrated. So to all intents and purposes, all of the people in this ground behind us are buried in unconsecrated ground. They are throwaway people. They are people that society discarded. They are the outcast. We stand here on vigil night to honor them. Just as in the same way as if there's a big statue of some big knobby person somewhere where we're honoring them, we honor these, our people, our ancestors. It's this class of people upon whose shoulders we all stand, the lowest of the low. When you talk about the lowest of the low, back in those medieval times, when the Liberty of Winchester housed all the things that the city of London on the other side of the river, which echoes, they're both a square mile each, the Liberty and the city, where in the city so much was not allowed and it was pushed out to the edges. So it came to places like here, the South, to Southern, the Liberty of Winchester, bear baiting, cop fighting, the theatres, prostitution. So this is the kind of place that we are considering when we stand here. Lots of people have often said, why don't we go into the garden to do our celebration? 
but we have always, and with good reason, put ourselves on the outside here to give us an awareness that on the inside are the outcasts. We make ourselves outcast by standing ourselves on the street. So we are the outcast and they are on the end. Every single month we come here to do three simple things. We honor the outcast, we refresh and renew the shrine, and we reclaim the goose's secret history. Now, if you've not been before, you won't have yet met the goose, <laughs> but you will, dear, I promise you. Because as she says herself, I am a Trixie Tart dear. My aim is to astonish you. We can consider maybe if you'd like, if we are in liberty here. Everybody relates to the goose how they would like to relate to goose. Um, but we can consider her to be an agent of transformation because as she tears through the veil from her eternity into our time, how she comes, she looks like she's a guard goose driving you away. When she comes through that veil, what she does is she's coming through singing. And she comes through singing and she tells us what she is. Who says, I was born a goose of Southwark by the grace of Mary Overy, whose bishop gives me license to sin within the liberty. She also tells us what she's going to do. I will dunk you in the river and then reveal my mystery. This is the goose. Goose also tells us actually quite simply what we're doing here. Goose says we're here in the flesh to reclaim and repossess the spirit and its quest for consummation. Personally, I find that tremendously exciting and comforting to know that the spirit is not floating around with her finger in her ear while we've got to go out on a quest to hunt. No. Spirit's got its own quest for us. What a thought that I am so wanted that spirit comes looking for consummation. What a blessing. So we've stood here. This is not a religious service. We welcome all religions and none. This is what we call an act of sacred profanity because everything is included here. We're whole. We bring our broken hearts. We bring our broken wings. We bring our wholeness if we're, if we're whole. We bring whatever we bring, but we bring complete everything here. All our outcast of ourselves, because we don't only honor the outcast dead, we honor the outcast both dead and alive. So we consider the outcast now in this world. Any one of us can consider somebody out there that we think is outcast. Like I said, we might be considering something in ourselves that we really don't like we really don't want to acknowledge in ourselves because we think it's nasty it's ugly it's dirty it's grubby but it's us even if we only practice doing that once a month for an hour all of our outcast bits come here and we honor so we bring all of ourselves And to work the vigil, we do four or five simple rituals. The first of the rituals is, oh, it's to the light. The first of the rituals is holding the light. We stand in silence just for one minute. 
and we practice what we call here shining emptiness. The world's out there, you can't avoid the world. Wherever we go, we can't avoid what's going on around us. And it's particularly obvious when you're in the city, because sometimes you can, because the aeroplanes are going by, or the helicopters, or the police sirens, or the train. <laughs> but we don't put a barrier up exactly. What we do is we focus our focus in and all of what's going on. We just allow that to go on. Because that's not worrying us. We're here quietly on this edge doing our work here. Who says all her children gathered there, endowed with grace and dignity, the deformed and the deviant embraced into her unit. That's us here. So we start where everything starts in the silence. We hold the candle and we use the candle as a physical manifestation of the light that we hold inside us. Whether you consider that to be the light of your intellect or the light of your love or the fire of your passion or how every single cell in you is a light with some kind of light, so you're shining. And we allow that light and just that, we allow everything else to just become invisible until we are just a light where we wish for all the beings in all the worlds to be truly in liberty. Can somebody volunteer to hold the light for me? Um, Di, would you do that? And I will ring our bell once to start and once to stop this minute silence. Lots of us in our busy, busy world, we don't even know what silence is. 
inside us, do we? Because we're so busy one thing, another thing, one thing, another thing, one thing, another thing, until there's hardly a space in between. That's what I always feel we do here. We kind of take the two things that we were doing in the world and we make a space between them here. The goose calls the silence. Well, she calls us to pipe down, <laughs> shut your mouth, add some respect, humility, and hearken to the silence what is brimming with immensity. When I'm at my Tai Chi class, my Tai Chi teacher tells us above our head, boundless silence. No interfere with the city, the noise, the, the things that rise and fall in our lives, my voice. Rises, dies away, the trains, dies away, the people go past, they're here, they're gone, it's here, it's gone. But the silence is there all the time. And we breathe that silence in. That silence is already inside us, in our lungs, in our blood, in every single cell of our body. And the silence that is already in there recognizes the silence that produces eternity. Say yes. Yes. To each other. The next part of our vigil is called the act of binding and loosing. And what we do, we hang ourselves or our substitutes of ourselves, our ribbons or our gifts on the gates. Um, back in the day, there were always people that would come to the gates, to the vigil, and not have a gift to bring. So we started bringing 23 little gifts if people wanted, needed a gift, needed a ribbon to hang on the gates. Thanks, Natalie. Do you want to hold on to that? Um, if while I'm just introducing the act of binding and loosing, you would like to pass some of your, the ribbons out, um, I'm astonished that there are actually so many of you and very grateful that you've all arrived, but there might not be in, enough ribbons Day 500 other ribbons. They might not be enough ribbons to go round because I only brought 23. If you don't have a ribbon, imagine yourself a virtual ribbon. And when we are hanging our ribbons on the gates, just come forward and touch the gates and imagine tying or imagine tying yourself to the gates. So we bind ourselves and we loose ourselves as we do this act. And during this dance where we come forward and we go back to our places again, we repeat what we call an echo prayer. It's not really a prayer, it's a statement of what we're doing. Um, but what we do is I will say one phrase and you and, and people who know it will repeat it back. If you would like to join in, you'd be very welcome. Um, so repeat all of it back to us as we do what we do, or even just single words that you might hear that whatever you want to do to echo back what, we, what we're saying here to strengthen that magic. We repeat the poem five times to give everybody plenty of time, especially during the times of more sensitiveness, sensitivity about illness and so on. Um, I'm not obsessed, honestly, I'm just very aware. Um, to give everybody the chance to come in and have their moment, maybe look through the gates, maybe see Red Cross Mary and the shrine alight, 
maybe even come close enough to put your face at the actual portal so you can feel the silence that comes out from the garden. You people on the Zoom will just have to imagine this. Let's <laughs> do it next. So this is what we say. Here lay your heart. Here lay your, your heart. Flower, your flowers. Your book of hours. Your book of hours. Your fingers. Your fingers. Your thumbs. Your you thumbs. Your mums. Here hang your hopes. Here hang your hopes. Your dreams. Your mighty things. Your mighty things. Your mysteries. Here are your hearts, your flowers, your book of hours, your fingers, your thumbs. You miss you, mums. Here hang your hopes, your dreams, your might have been, your locks, your keys. Here lay your heart, flowers, your flowers, your book of hours, your fingers, your fingers, your thumbs, your mums, here hang your hopes, hang your hopes, your dreams, your might, your might have been, your locks, your keys, your mysteries. Here lay your heart, your flowers. Your book of hours, your fingers, your thumbs, your fingers, your thumbs. Here hang your hopes, here hang your hopes, your dreams, your, your, dreams, your mighty your things, locks, your locks, your keys, your mysteries. Here lay your hearts, your flowers, your book of hours, your fingers, your thumbs, your missy mums. Here hang your hopes, your dreams, your might of things, your locks, your keys, your mysteries. The sacred offerings is a place where the speaker, the leader, stands back and offers this space in front of everybody before the gates for anybody that wants to offer something of themselves to the vigil. They might want to offer a poem, they might want to offer a song or a dedication to somebody of their own that have passed away. Please remember it's not an open mic. Um, whatever you would like to bring for us all to enjoy and listen to or for our edification. It has to be to do with crossbones and the vigil, but within your own lights. If you decide that this is to do with crossbones, then we are not going to be here judging you. It's to do with crossbones. We always start with goose words, words that John Constable channeled from the goose, starting many years ago, oh, 23rd of November, 1996, was the very first time the goose started speaking to John and channeling her mystery to him. Um, I've quoted the first verse of the first book of the goose, I was born a goose of Southern. Um, during the course of the poetry, Goose comes back to tell us some of the other things that she might appear to us as. So I'm going to offer that first one now, that, that poem to introduce this section of the vigil now. I am the wind. I rake the wild grasses. 
I am the reaper, the sower, the seed. I am the days of the bonny lads and lasses. I am the night where their secret paths lead. I am the sense field, a flower in your fingers. I am the musk in the dusk of the day. I am the ghost of a smile that lingers where the face where it flickered has faded away. I am the song of a blackbird in Eden. I am the waft in a butterfly's wing. And I am here in the static and stutter that shatter how much I and I can take in. I am the white noise of a nervous system. I am the silence in which it reroots. I am the gods and the men in resistance, the madness in the eyes of the men in suits. I am in George, I must conquer my dragon. I am in Martha, I nurse the red gash. I am Hag Keridwen with her raw red rag on. I am Carly, Razor in the flash and slash. I am the light in the shadow revealing. I am the grace that transfigures the sin. I am the wound that prefigures the healing. I am the light of the traveler's in. I'll be your icon, your muse, your conceit. I'll be whatever you would have me be. I'll be Mary Magdalene washing your feet if it helps you see through what divides you from me. Thank you, John Constable. Thank you, God. So as we go on, can I get a, just a show of hands of anybody that wants to offer anything during this sacred day 500, not you tonight? Another time. Lovely. Do you mean on the equinox, the next one, spring equinox? If it was the solstice, we'd have to wait all the time till the summer. Yeah. Okay. Now, there is a group of university students from the University of Arts in London. Thank you. And they are producing a film um, as part of their university degree. So I'd like to offer one of you or all of you to come forward and introduce to tell us all what it's about because they might have something to ask us to do as well. We're actually doing two separate films on two different things. Yeah, hi everyone, it's so nice to be here. Um, so we are at the University of Arts and we're doing a documentary on what a beautiful place this is and what a beautiful job that Jennifer and all of you guys do. And we are here kind of just looking at how meaningful this place is to everyone. So at the end of this service, if anybody would like to come and speak to us and share anything, we're, we are from me, so um, please feel free. And thank you so much, Jonathan, for having us. And I'll hand you guys over to Angelina, who is doing something. I'm doing a separate documentary. I think we were both attracted to, or well, me in particular, about how the story of preserving crossbones and the history is very interesting to me. And I found it so inspiring, the story of community coming together to save something that's important to us. And I think that that's something that everyone can take away, that if something really means something to you and you can feel when it means something, there's nothing people won't stop at to protect it. Now, excuse me all a minute while I talk to the Zoom video. Is John there? John, are you prepared? Tonight is the 202nd anniversary of the death of John Keats. And we at the vigil have rather adopted John because he used to work in Guy's Hospital, Mr. Guy's Hospital. I, sorry, I think they're going to be bringing the car out. So if you would just come in a little bit closer to give them an opportunity to bring the car out while we sort John out. John, are you going to offer us the John Keats poem? Can you hear, Jen? Yes, indeed. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to stand John in front of us, and he is going to perform, he is going to give us our sacred offering. Take it away, Mr Constable. 
Hello, hello everyone on Zoom and especially at Crossbones Gates. Uh, yeah, I've always traditionally in this part have offered obviously the, the work of the goose as revealed to John Crow in the Southwark Mysteries. Uh, and recently, uh, Jennifer has done a wonderful job of uh, what we've come to call being a rhapsode, a goose rhapsode. Of, of, of learning and being very fluent with, with these words, which the goose revealed. So, to, so this frees it up to uh, celebrate John Keats, uh, who died uh, 202 years ago this very night, the 23rd of February, 1821, aged only 25, an incredibly short life even by um, 70s rock star standards. And, uh, and yet an extraordinarily fulfilled life in a strange way. Uh, I got to live to be already 70. Uh, and I, I already realized that we can't really measure life in years or time. We measure it in perhaps moments in eternity. And so this is a, a very um, painful poem for, um, for Keats written as he faced his own death. And yet its truth is embodied in a form of extraordinary beauty. When I have fears that I may cease to be. When I have fears that I may cease to be before my pen has gleaned my teeming brain, before high piled books in charactery hold like rich garners the full ripened grain. When I behold upon the night's starred face huge cloudy symbols of a high romance and think that I may never live to trace their shadows with the magic hand of chance. And when I feel, fair creature, of an hour that I shall never look upon thee more, never have relish in the fairy power of unreflecting love, then on the shore of the wide world I stand alone and think till love and fame to nothingness do sink. John Keats. Yeah, please remember that we're not in really get a nice speaker for next time because I do personally love having we've only just recently started having the members of the Zoom vigil being able to share in the sacred offerings. Um, and it was obviously very difficult because the poem that Mark was offering him. So I think we're going to get a speaker to make sure that we can all hear the Zoom people better for next time. Did you so, get yeah. any of it, Jen? What did he say? Did yeah. get... I heard that you were a creature of an hour. <laughs> Go to nothing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Thank John. You. Thank you. Is there anybody else on Zoom that wants to offer something? It's not a very long Zoom. We can meet it again. It's loud. Okay, well, and, uh, and nobody else here? Okay. This gentleman wants to read it out. Well, no, I'm just saying we could read the poem. I could read the poem loudly. So well, now there's a thing. Let's do, yeah, that. let's do that. Good thinking. So I think it's when I have fears that I may cease to be. Exactly so. When I have fears that I may cease to be, before my pen has gleamed my teeming brain, before high piled books in character hold like rich garners the full ripened grain. When I behold, on the night's starred face, huge cloudy symbols of a high romance, and I think that I may never live to trace their shadows with the magic hand of trance. And when I feel, fair creature of an hour, that I shall never look upon thee more, 
never have relished that in the fairy power of unreflecting love. Then on the shore of the wide world I stand alone and think, till love and fame to nothings do sink. That's it, John Keats. Anybody else? Three, four, let war be waged without. Tear down the door and out the prison wall. Let it all fall down to be born again in liberty. And let within the dream of skin. Shaheed, who is without sin, cast the stone. But we all have our stake in the sum of human misery, our messes and scraps and clap traps, those niggled in, naggled in. Fibberty, gibberty, novelty, grovelty, mincy, queeny, artsy, fartsy. Oh, how nasty. Minister, what's your private party? Party, political, put piggy in the middle, dump and hump and jump on him, fill him full of estrogen, put a time bomb under him. Roast pork and bacon fat. How'd you like to chew on that? Down in Ministry of Sound, where we do we tribal dances, dear, what comes from underground isn't subject to the rule of fear. It must have given you a start to find me so lysergic, dear. When it comes to stealing hearts and healing rifts between our hemispheres, there's no trick I wouldn't pull to entice you over here. John Constable and the Goose, thank you. One more Keats poem that would be nice to read, which was the last one that Keats wrote, Bright Star. He wrote it on his deathbed in the back of his copy of Shakespeare's Cymbeline, I think. That's Bright Star, true. would I were steadfast as thou art, not in lone splendor, hung aloft a night and watching with eternal lids apart, like nature's patient sleepness eremite. The moving waters at their priest-like task of pure ablution round earth's human shores, or gazing on the new soft fallen mask of snow upon the mountains and the moors, no, yet still steadfast, still unchangeable, pillowed upon my fair love's ripening breast, to feel forever its soft fall and swell, Awake forever in a sweet unrest, still, still to hear a tendon taken breath, and so live forever, or else swoon to death. We're coming to the end of our vigil now. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you for the effort that you've made and the focus that you've had for however long you've known you were coming to make it here with us tonight. What we do at the last ritual, we call it the gin ritual and the blessings. We offer two blessings and I will be asking somebody to be gin gin. Um, and what we do is what we will all do is we will hang ourselves on the gates, touch the gates, get as close to the gates as you possibly can. If you find you're unable to touch the gates, touch somebody who's touching the gates and that will work. Meanwhile, Sue, who is acting as our gin gen this evening, will go round from one side of the gates and seal us all in with gin. Like everything else here that we reclaim, we reclaim gin. This is what the women and the people, the poor people we would have drunk. We reclaim it. And this is what we use as our holy fluid. So off you go, Sue. You seal us in. Sprinkle it on the floor. Just sprinkle it. Just sprinkle. You can afford to be quite generous. We, meanwhile, will hang ourselves on the gates. How are you? Touching <laughs> or being touched. And this again. 
is an echo. I will call out a line and you will repeat it back. They are all blessings. You won't be giving your soul away. Are you ready, Sue? <laughs> Life. 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 Health. 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 Happiness. Health. Happiness. 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 Open pathways. Open pathways. Open pathways. Life. 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 Health. Happiness. Happiness. Open pathways. Open pathways. Open pathways. Health in the body. Health, Health in, the in the body. Peace in the spirit. Peace in the spirit. Love in the heart. Love in the heart. Health in the body. Health in the body. Peace in the spirit. Peace in the spirit. Love in the heart. It is this, this that we wish. It is this that we wish for ourselves, for, ourselves. for our friends and family, for our friends and family, for all our siblings, for all our siblings, for the goose and the crow, for the goose and the crow, and for all humanity, and for all humanity. It is this that we wish. It is this that we wish for ourselves, for ourselves, friends and family, for our friends and family, for all our siblings, for all our siblings, goose and the crow. The, the goose, goose and the crow. crow, and for all humanity, and for all humanity. humanity. may it be so. May it be so. Uh, goose, may you never be hungry. Goose, goose may, may you never, never be, be hungry. hungry. Goose, may you never be thirsty. Goose, goose may, may you never be thirsty. thirsty. Goose, may your spirit fly free. Goose, goose may, may your spirit fly free. free. And so she does, everybody. And so she does. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Um, there will be a couple of notices. And also, before I pass over to Zanna to give the notices, because I don't know what the notices are, I would like to put forward in front of you John's old captain's hat. It's not a captain's hat anymore. We've lost our captain. He's gone to be Glastonbury dirty. <laughs> it's now a collection hat. If anybody would like to donate any small amount of money to pay for the expenses of the vigil, this hat is sitting on the shrine and will gratefully accept anything that you would like to offer. Um, who will it take you? Pass it yes, you can pass it round if you'd like. Thank you, Di, very much, somebody. And is, has anybody got any notices that they wanted to share? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll do a notice. Your notice, Anna's going to do a notice. Because there's lots of new people here, um, I think it's really important to update you with part of the fight that's going on to remain a voice involved with the crossbows as the vigil. Um, we used to have a forum and the forum was stopped and we are having a meeting with the developers to ask for the forum to be re-instigated, which is an opportunity for everyone that's here to, tonight to be able to be involved more actively with the whole scenario what happens with the garden, what happens outside the individual, in just protecting it so it can go on. It's as simple uh, an issue as how we maintain that the road is closed off and that people aren't in any danger when they're standing here at the vigil, especially when there's so many people, because this is a fight that's actually continuing we need help at each end of the road. We need to have barriers that are actually easily to, easy to store. Um, we need to work together to keep this thing going. It's great to see people come once, but actually it's even better if people come more than once and actually participate in how much work it is to keep this going. Um, you know, if anyone has got time, I think it's, you, you should keep yourself abreast through vigilante of, of how the situation is progressing. Um, Jen didn't talk about vigilante, but maybe we might. <laughs> 
Yes, I completely forgot about Vigilante. We run a monthly newsletter called Vigilante, of course, um, and it's by email. So if any of you would like to receive that by email once a month, if you give me your email address or give it to Natalie here. Um, and what, what Zana was saying about running the vigil, if anybody is interested in joining the MC or simply in supporting what we do here to help close the road, to become a, a goose um, rhapsode, which is to learn a few lines of the goose poetry to offer. Um, anything that you would like to offer, please come and talk to me. Um, or Natalie, of course. That's it. Thank you. No, you can buy the Southwark Mysteries physically, but I don't think it's online. I think you can get it via all good bookshops. All good bookshops. <laughs> <laughs> A good bookshop. I've got a book token at home that someone gave me for my birthday. <laughs> oh, yes, Pamela. Sorry, I've been so busy trying to get in out of the cold. Um, Penny here Jenny. would like to introduce Jenny. Jenny, I've got the same name as you. You should know that. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> this woman whose name I don't know <laughs> would like to talk to you about the death camp. So myself and Di, who's been helping out tonight, we run a death cafe at a uh, community cafe in Elephant and Castle. So you might know it's the Electric Elephant. Um, our next one is on the first, uh, the twenty-first of March. It's autumn equinox one. We don't do anything to do with that. The concept of the death cafe is just for people to come along in a safe space to talk about death and dying and anything else they want to talk about. Because quite often you might want to talk about things or talk about making a will or what you'd like if you were ever diagnosed with a um, serious illness but you don't necessarily have people who feel comfortable talking about those things and it's it's an opportunity to do that with people who aren't afraid to talk about death and it's facilitated by dying himself i'll pop this on the thing there's a qr code so if you just scan that you can find out more details and how to uh, Thanks, Jenny. It's such a relief that people just poke themselves straight in because if you waited for me to invite you, you could be waiting forever. <laughs> Is that it? Does anybody else want to make a surprise announcement? That's it. I think we officially declare this vigil well and true. All right, guys, thank you for coming. If anyone wants, by the way, um, B told me that you have a like a little informal um, con contributions section. If any of you want to say a poem or anything of that type, then feel free to um, yeah, unmute and say what you want to say, basically. But if not, we can uh, we can call the Zoom one also closed. Okie dokie. So um, thanks so much for coming. I hope it was, uh, I hope the connection was all right for you guys. I'm going to stop the recording now. Um, yep, I hope, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I don't usually like Zoom this much, but yeah, I'm going to clap too. <laughs> Big up and um, see, see you next month. Either one's, I'll be there in person, but see you next month. Thank you. No worries. Bye. Bye-bye.